Happy July. Hi. <laughs> it's July. It's July. <laughs> Hello, my friend. Hi. <laughs> hey, we got some stuff to talk about. Yeah. Like. Yep, we do. I mean, <laughs> good grief. Yep, we do. Here we are, halfway through the year. Um. Oh my God. <laughs> With my fast, didn't it? Wow. Yeah. Through at least through the, the, the our Western year, we still got a month to go before we get to the the Eastern year. But yeah. Gosh, dang. What's going on? Well, you know, it went by really fast, but now the universe is going to slam on the brakes. I hope so. I hope so because I think people are getting frazzled. They're they're not thinking straight. Um, they're overreacting and feeling uncertain because yeah. of what they're seeing out there. And it's, I'm hoping sh things will shift. Yep. So we're, we're coming into on July 7th, we're coming into the month of the yin earth goat or sheep, goat and sheep are kind of interchangeable. To me, the sheep is a little bit more passive, a little bit more go with the group, and the goat is more daring, more of a risk taker, wants to kind of butt heads with systems. So that's a lot of earth energy, but it's yin earth energy. Mm. And to me, yin earth energy is, is unstable. It's not really solid footing because it's movable. It's like the dirt that blows like the tornadoes it's whipping up things and moving things around so how is that are you seeing that in your world are you like what do you feel that might show up like for us in july well i think that the duality of that you're talking about with the sheep is really kind of interesting there's this side of the sheep or the goat that is that goat that can really butt heads with people be really super stubborn but then there's the other side of it that's a little bit more peaceful and loving and i think that we're going to be proposed with a choice this july of are we going to really engage in that stubborn butting of heads or are we going to engage in more peaceful mm. peaceful mentality it's a choice like it is every day so um yeah, and and I, go ahead go ahead well i think another way to look at the the goat sheep duality is the sheep is can also be just blindly following it's like well this is what they said so i'm gonna believe them or yeah. this is you know this is the way i've always known it to be yeah. now the goat is because of his adventurous side will step outside of the herd will step outside of the community and see things from mm -hmm. a fringe perspective to say yeah. oh, you guys do you see what's happening here like they see it from a different angle and yeah. so it might be inviting us to maybe be rebellious or to look at things differently and not always follow the path because yeah. a lot of times that path is unstable. And a lot of times we're following somebody else's agenda. Totally. If we're, if we're just, you know, flocking together and doing what everybody else is doing, making mm -hmm. sure that it aligns with who we are. And if it doesn't, yeah. then, then Create your own crusade. Let it go. Create your, yeah. you know, stand on your own mountain and and be strong. Uh, I could go on and on about that, but yeah, please elaborate. So the other thing that I wanted to talk about is yin earth. It's kind of like when you go to the beach, you pick up the sand and you can see it fall through fall yeah. through your your fingers. Or you can build a sand castle. Mm -hmm. Right. The sandcastle isn't going to last because someone can come along and step on it. Right. But I think that there's some playful energy that's available to us mm. this month. It's mm -hmm. still in the northern hemisphere. It's still summertime. There's still fun things to be doing. There's a few holidays that are going to be coming up in July. And I think we have an opportunity to, you know, bring some of that fun kind of energy. What do we want to build? What do we want to create with the sand? Mm -hmm. Do we want to build a sand castle? Do we want to dig a hole? Like, what do we want to do? There's, there's some opportunity there. Yeah. I'm not, yeah. I like, I like that you mentioned the summer and, you know, cause that's that herd energy of the sheep. It's like gathering, coming together. 
and you know when you go to the the petting zoo and the the baby goats and the baby sheep they're just so fun and playful to be yeah. around they're so silly um but i love your visuals too of the sand and and also i think finding joy and play in the impermanence of mm -hmm. what we're creating that it could be just fleeting right we're gonna yeah. have to leave that sand castle there and go home or like you said, a wave could come in and, and, and take it away. So mm -hmm. I feel like there is a sense of impermanence that we could play with and understand. And if we could, because I also see the sheep because it sits in the Southwest sector is kind of the ruler of self-love mm -hmm. and relationships and that kind of thing. And so we could even, I think with, with clear intentions and prayer or meditation, journaling, um, movement is allow some of the things that we've allowed to become our permanent stories mm -hmm. that are so grounded in us Yeah, to maybe blow them out into the ethers as an, it, it doesn't have to be permanent. It doesn't have to be something that's always holding you back or always interfering with a deeper bond with somebody. I just mm -hmm. feel like there's there's some movement that we could create that could really, because I, I get that when I say the words instability, that could be scary for some people. Oh crap, what does that mean? Yeah. But if we look at it as impermanence, that it's fleeting, it's a moment in time, or it's a transition, yeah, I think there's some potential if we're really compassionate within and can be mm -hmm. really compassionate with other people, because that's also a true characteristic of the sheep. I think we could really do some serious mo healing through some movement. So yeah. Mind, body, soul, spirit, whatever. Yeah. I like what you said about the word instability. There's this opportunity to kind of, kind of like... If you feel like the earth is shaking, go with it. Let's see where it takes us rather than fighting against it. Yeah. You know, when you try to fight against the earth element, the earth element is pretty, regardless of whether it's yin or yang, the earth element is going to be there. It's going to, yeah, it's going to it be, settles down. going to settle. Yeah. Yeah. So going with the flow of where it feels shaky. Yeah. Just go stand somebody, stand somewhere else, or you know, stand yeah. next to somebody different. I was gonna say, grab, grab onto someone's arm for some stability. There you go. I like that. Yeah, because that's the partnership thing about yeah. that southwest sector is, is two yeah. people. Because um, I don't think we have to do it alone. No. No, we don't have to do it alone. Um, oxes need to pay attention this month because mm. ox is opposite the sheep. So yes. that forms a clash. And so, again, there may be some shifts and changes going on with the ox. The ox doesn't, the ox doesn't like change a bunch. No. <laughs> but that goat comes in and bugs the ox and kind of forces a change. Yeah. So, you know, you know. If you do have an ox in your chart where whatever pillar that lies in, pay attention to that pillar, pay attention to that animal this month and just see what comes up. See where that unstable ground, where it shows up in your life and pay yeah. attention. To that. If that ox is in your first pillar, your emotional pillar, you know, it's going to push you. It might make you think about other people besides, you know, yourself. Mm -hmm. um, if it's, and it might be, might have some issues coming up with ch your children because yeah. that's where your children sit. If it's in your day pillar, that's your health. And so there might be a shift that you need to take a look at. And it might, you yeah. know, for oxen, health issues are more like physical. It's their physical yeah. bones and structure because that's, that's how they kind of move through the world. And it's their spouse in that pillar, the, the second mm -hmm. pillar, which is your day pillar. And if it's the month pillar, that could be your parents your birth family, as well as your belief systems are being challenged during sheep yeah. periods. So you have to start thinking differently and be op more open-minded and not so hard bullheaded. And yeah. then if it's the year pillar, that's your life path. So be open to some shifts and changes in your career, 
in you know things that you're doing like even rerouting a trip that you thought you were going to take that got canceled or whatever yeah so yeah that i'm glad you brought that up and i think we should probably spend more time talking maybe even about those animals in moving mm -hmm. forward the different relationships yeah. so you know if you're listening to this now when you come back to listen to us bring your chart with you bring your four pillar chart and have it in front of you so that you can and we'll maybe go a little bit deeper on that what do you think yeah sounds good okay so I'm what game. About the western world oh well i mean it's a continuation of that earth energy we we have by the end of july we'll have five planets in the earth element like i said no kidding. the universe is really kind of slamming on the brakes um the beginning of july um we had the full moon in Capricorn, bringing us um, an opportunity to let go of business practices or structures that are no longer serving us. There's the sandcastle again. Is the mm -hmm. sandcastle something that we want or do we want to kind of smash it down? Mm -hmm. um, Pluto, the planet of transformation, retrograded back into the sign of Capricorn, really transforming and letting, helping us let go of the structures, government structures and business structures that are no longer serving us. Hmm. Um, Uranus, the planet of the unexpected for the last five years has been in the sign of Taurus, which is an earth sign as well, um, creating kind of an instability for Taurus. Taurus likes structure. It's that it's that earth energy. Hmm. Um, Jupiter, the planet of good fortune and abundance is also in Taurus. Um, until 2024, the end of the, oh, well, toward, let's see, towards the middle of the month, July 11th, we have Mars, the planet of forward movement, physical vitality, and the, the planet of our desires moving into the sign of Virgo. Virgo is the strategist. So this is going to be a really good time and a good month to figure out what the strategies and what the routines that we have where are they working for us where are they not where do we need to revise some of those where do we need to create some structure around those um and then mercury the planet of communication at the end of july uh, july 29th enters virgo as well mercury enjoys being in the sign of virgo because virgo is the analyst it is the one that has uh, the critical mind but the temptation for all of us towards the end of july especially with all of this kind of stubborn earth energy is to be hypercritical of ourselves and hypercritical of everyone else. So with those gatherings here in Utah towards the end of July, be really, really careful about getting kind of nitpicky with your friends and family mm. and really super specific with things. Let things go. Oh, great insights. So July is the month of, or we're in the month of cancer right now right? Cancer, yeah. until... Cancer season into Leo. And when does Leo start? Leo starts around the 21st of July. Okay. In August. Okay. So, so Cancer the... season uh -huh. and then Leo. So what's the opposite sign of Cancer and Leo? Opposite sign of Cancer is that Capricorn energy. Beginning of July, we had that new moon or sorry, the full moon in Cancer. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Full moon in Capricorn, which is okay. an Earth energy, and then later in the month we'll have the new moon in Cancer, which is that um, water energy, nurturing mother energy. Okay. Wow, it's so interesting how they're just lining up. Yeah, right? they do. Capricorn's they line up. It's the goat and the Taurus is the ox. Kind yeah. Of. Yeah. I mean, there's all of these. Archetypal energies are coming together in July to really get us to, you know, ground ourselves and figure out where the structures need to shift. And, you know, that sheep wants us to think about our relationships, really wants us to, if, if there's struggling relationships, we need to figure out where they're struggling and really start to bring some compassion there. Mm -hmm. I agree. Wow, this is awesome. Because next month, the following month, I don't know, it's going to be, it sounds like, it feels like a really, really driven, disciplined, um, uh, just like a cutting edge month coming into August. So yep. we need it to is. like just kind of surrender in and go with the flow of things and really, 
I just saw, in fact, I just shared it on my Facebook story because one of our, our VIA folks shared it. And it was like, just like for a whole day, just love everything for the whole day, mm -hmm. no matter what, and see what a difference it makes. Yeah. Love the person on the road that cut you off. Love the person that got your order wrong. Love paying mm -hmm. bills. Love, you know, stubbing your toe. Love everything and see if mm -hmm. it makes a difference. That's okay. good. That's good advice. I love that. I love that. So let's pull a card. Okay. So interesting. This this is called the storm fields. And you can see in this image, there's kind of a twister going through and it's kind of disrupting the energy. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like the it's kind of like, you know, the wind coming through the beach and kind of causing the sand to move or the waves coming through and crashing down the sand castle. So it's yeah. important for us to be okay with whatever comes along and whatever is moving our structures, mm -hmm. uh, whatever disruption comes. And then the one ring circus, we, we have to go, we have to go within and really figure out where, where we're not feeling grounded. Mm -hmm. We have to deal with ourselves first before we can deal with other people. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when we're not conscious of what's going on within us, that energy tends to leak out onto other people. So we have to take full responsibility and be practical about what our own emotions are, what we're feeling, what our disruptions are, and then treat people accordingly rather than allowing that energy to come out on other people. Oh, it just, it's almost like a pandemic these days, yeah. right? With yeah. how much everybody's just projecting and, you know, spilling their stuff on each other and yeah, in so many inappropriate ways. I mean, like we should all be wearing shirts that say trigger warning. <laughs> I'll exactly. probably trigger you. Because <laughs> everyone's triggered. I know I am. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's, there's so many things that I used to, you know, just that I would watch on television or look at on my phone that I cannot even go there anymore because mm -hmm. I can't, can't allow one of those negative thoughts to come into my mind because it's liable to send me straight to the pits of hell. Right. And when you're there pulling yourself out of that takes a lot of effort. So I would just as soon allow myself the, the grace to be in a peaceful state. Yeah. I wonder if some of that, if there's more triggering right now, and it's, it's like you said, this spiral and kind of getting caught up in it, speaks to me to this rabbit year, you know, because it's it's a dweller in the ground. It's like going deep, mm -hmm. right? Going within and digging up some old stuff. So some old things, oh. like are we being triggered because these are old things that need to come to the surface? Mm -hmm. And then like, you know, picture them as the sandcastle getting washed away by the, you know, the ocean tide. Or are we going to, you know, go in there and protect that can sandcastle with everything we got, getting pissed off at people for riding over it with their dune buggy. So I think, I mean, it's really interesting, these conversations and hearing other people too, because I know you're like me, we start trying to connect the dots of why this yeah. is happening right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think I've shared this before, but at the beginning of every year, I find an image on YouTube or a video that best describes how that animal is going to be showing up for me for the year. And the image or video that we found at the first of the year is of this caretaker picking up a little rabbit and the rabbit is fighting like hell to get out of its arms. And then another little rabbit is fighting the caretaker too to let go of the rabbit. So there's components of the rabbit feeling a little bit trapped, like it's mm. cagey and it wants to get out. But then there's other rabbits that are fighting like hell to protect the others. And the image of you protecting the sandcastle from the dune buggies is the same kind of image. Mm. And a lot of rabbits struggle with anxiety because they're you know, their super spidey senses are those ears, right? They can hear things coming from miles away, but their only defense also is to bolt, right? Yeah. They can kind of bat with their little paws at people. That isn't going to do much damage. No, <laughs> which is probably good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, oh, do you want to add anything else before we sign off? Oh, that's it. I think, I think that, I think that we've covered everything. 
just try our hardest to enjoy the energy of the summer. Enjoy the energy that's coming up. Enjoy creative ventures. Enjoy each other. Enjoy the sheep energy. Let's do it. Thank you. I enjoy you. You. <laughs> I enjoy you too. It's fun. Bye, everybody. Bye.